I grew up here, this is where I was born, but I know nothing only here. And we had a brilliant, a brilliant uh, upbringing here. Like, uh, totally idyllic. Like, yeah. That yeah. time you were on with us and you turned the camera around to look out the window, it was just like, wow, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It is really just, the be beach is a kilometre away. That's class. Um, you know, it's, it's just um, an outstanding place to be reared and, and be brought up and I missed it when I, when I moved away from here, I always wanted to come back here. Yeah. You buy, when you buy a horse, you, can buy, you buy what you, what you want. When you breed, you get what, what, what you, you get, get. Yeah. you know. Yeah. So yeah. You get two gates. Yeah, two gates, yeah. yeah. Then there's other mares in here, then there's more mares in here. Um, Pretty Moon is a very good brood mare. Actually, I've only one flat mare. Right. I find it very difficult to get in. Um, get in because uh, look, the money is can be can be very strong. Uh, but if you look hard enough, you know there's 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 loads of value there. Yeah. If you, you just need to hit on the right mare and right. get lucky. Yeah. You know, but and uh, then but by the time if you're not breeding good horses in their first or second or third folds, you know you've an old mare. You know, and but then it's a it's a disease. Like it's it's just a very passionate game yeah. and you hang on to them and you hang on you're hoping you're yeah. praying and fingers crossed and, and would you ever be interested in like keeping them to run them yeah i i, I we do so 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 my dad we, we bred a filly um and uh we kept her and she ran the other day her first run on the race course and she was second she went to beat in the neck in right. Quebec the other night and hopefully she'll win a race and there's other bonuses along the way uh so that for you, you pay a, a, a sum of a couple of hundred euros at uh, either when their foals, yearlings, or up to their three-year-olds, and then you get a bonus. If you win a mare's race, okay. you get a bonus of 5,000 so for a bumper. you're incentivized to keep them Yes, yeah, you're okay. incentivized to run them. Yeah. So the breeder, the, breeder who, the breeder puts in everything. Right. So he, re he, he keeps the mare, he puts the mare in foal, he's got a lot of vet bills, it's a lot of, All the risk. A lot of, a yeah. lot of risk. So then for him to keep that going and to run a mare, he has an incentive to do that now, okay. which is good. It, he said it's a drug. It is a drug. <coughs> Animals in general are a drug, I suppose, whether it's your own pet dog or cat at home. You mind them, you know, as if they're children and we're the same. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of feeling towards these animals, do you know what I mean? Um, it's always on as well, that's the other thing. Like, it's, oh, it's, 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 um, it's, not, it's not a job. Oh no, it's just, it's, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's, it's a lifestyle, yeah. yeah. Like I, I, before I can decide to go anywhere or do anything, these have to be yeah. have to be looked after. Someone has to be here. They have to be checked. Like there is a human being inside in the field with these every single day, and whether it's for thirty seconds or sometimes you can walk into a field, you can spend half an hour inside in the field with them, just just making sure everything's all right, or even yeah. just spending time with them. Are you interested at all in getting into the train inside of it? Uh, I would love to be able to train horses. Um, as a young, a younger person, I was would be really, have been really keen, but no. No, th that's no. yeah. No, this is just another side. Of it. It's just a lot of money to get set up. You have to start right back down at zero. Yeah. Um, you know, I would have no bother taking it off and starting it. But look, if the lads, if the lads grow up and they want to ride point to point, I have no bother putting in a gallop and training a few horses. Yeah. But. You know, I'm 43 now. By the time I'd be up to 100 plus horses and competitive, you know, I'd be into, I'd be well into, into age. And then, you know, I've put everything, I've put everything into being a jockey. I've yeah. absolutely emptied the tank. Yeah. So this is it. Then this is where it all began and where it's all going to finish. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I had my first ride in my dad's colours. And I'd love to have my last ride in my dad's right. house. We'll, we'll take uh, Folly out of the box then. <coughs> and would you be encouraging your kids to become a jockey? No, but I don't really have to. They're kind of encouraging me to help them along the right. way. So, so they're, they're mad into it. They're mad into yeah. it, yeah. They love the horses. And it's great, they're out amongst animals and it's a great way of life. And The hardness of the life of the jockey is something, though, that are you happy enough for them to follow in the family business? Well, I wouldn't have done anything else. Right. And I loved it. 
Every minute of it. Every single minute of it. I loved being a jockey. I um, just lived the dream. From when I was a chap, there used to be pony races in that field in there. Right. Uh, there used to be flapper in around there, and I rode, I rode a winner around there uh, as a 14 or 15 year old kid. And all I wanted to be was uh, was ride horses. That's all I wanted to do. And then I wanted to ride a winner, and I done that. And then I wanted to be champion point to point rider, champion novice rider, and I done that. And then I wanted to be champion senior rider, and then I wanted to turn professional, and I wanted to ride in a Grand National. I dreamt of winning Grand Nationals. I dreamt of, and and lucky for me, I've 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 been able to live that dream and ride the roller coaster. So now Davy Russell shakes up Tiger Roll. Magic of Light in second, Ralph Vinden in third. Walk in the Mill is back in fourth. Tiger Roll is remarkable. He comes up towards the winning line under Davy Russell to win his second Randox Health Grand National. Tiger Roll joins the greats and beats Magic of Light a massive run in second. Rath Vinden third, clear of Walk in the Mill. Annabelle fly and then uh, one for Arthur. If my kids had half the experience that I had, um, but they'll have the edu their education first and they can make up their own mind. I'm yeah. not going to be telling them yeah. to go one way or another. And if they want to go down that route, they'll, they'll get all the assistance. And if they don't want to go that route, down the route, I'm not going to tell them that that's the route they need to go down. You no, know? that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. But it is a great game. It's the best game. It is the best game in the world. And there's a certain art in that. Um, there's a certain art in able to walk out to a field, throw a, a bridle on a horse, saddle a bridle on a horse, and jump up on his back and take off galloping. Yeah, yeah where would we go? Down to the farm, okay. We better go then, will we? Yeah, go on. No, no, you're not going to the trailer, you jump in the back. Too dangerous. So what are we going to watch? Or see yeah, here? The, so the two-year-olds are here. Uh, so some of them are bred and some of them are bought. Right. So some of them were born here. Some of them were bought at the sales as foals and you know different things. Um, we we're in horses for so long and we still can't figure them out. So I, I live, I live with them, basically, and still they'll surprise you every day. If you know what I mean? Uh, these are two-year-olds now. So that one there on the right is a daughter of Folly Stargate, the mare we took out of the box. Right. And the lad on the left is a, is a French horse that I bought in France. And what's your ambition with these? How long do you want to keep them? What's the... Oh, well, so now they're in their two-year-old year now, so they'll all turn three in January. Right. Uh, first of January, that's when every horse turns three. And um, they will, uh, they'll come in um, and they will start their prep. Then, you know, kind of, They'll come in during the worst of the weather and I'll start introducing different things from a bit in their mouth, uh, handling them, you know, you know, they'll go on the walker, they'll right. have a little lunch to make sure that they're sound, that um, that they've good wind. She's beautiful, Phil, you know, she's, she's, a, she's just a marvellous head in her now, she's a great head in her. But uh, she's a homebred there, that Philly, that dad, belong, she's belonged to dad, she's a Milan, she's by a Milan. There's an innocent old chap there now with that lad. He's quite. He, he was he was bought in France. Um, lovely quite horse, no lovely tempered horse. Um, there's a beautiful frame that horse. He just has to fill. It. I don't have him that long, but when he fills into his frame. I was going to ask that. How, how much bigger will they get? Uh, well, they're all roughly around 16 hands now. You know, a little bit under, a little bit over. Um, I rode Big Zeb one day uh, in a novice chase around Fairy House over two miles. He got beat. And I said, geez, when you step up to three miles, he's going to be a very good horse. Yeah. He never stepped over two miles, and he still was a very, he was one of a queen mother. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So he was by Oscar. He was bred to stay. So even at that age, you can't, you can't. Well, I was, I should have known, but uh, I didn't, I got it wrong. <laughs> I but he arranges the plan, it's a, it's a business. Right. So you breed them, to sell them, to make money. And to again. get a wage, yeah. to keep the whole thing going, to keep the whole thing professional and run right and keep my fields, my farm, 
you know, pay for all the things that need to be paid for on a farm. You, you just don't sit back and watch the grass grow. You know, there's a load of things have to go go along in with it and you need money for that and there's no point you keep putting in your own money you're going to be broke fairly quick well I was going to say yeah. Yeah. I'm sure the temptation sometimes is oh this one's special we should just keep it but actually that's not yeah no no not for me it's all, everything is for sale right yeah that's the, that's what it is it's, it, it, it's a business it's a business so they were bought to be bred to be sold right. you know and yeah. they're they're bought to be sold that someone else will will um, will will raise them you know what I mean so and that's the plan she bites you, Liam. She will. Ah. Will you get up? Do you want to get up now? Ah, I do get up now. Go on. I love you, Dad. Did you do something wrong? What do you have to do? <laughs> You're out to do something, show me. What do you have to do? <laughs> Change your stake into your other hand. Where'd you put it? Where is it? I'm going to... You can't drop your stake. So, uh, so when we were riding around here, actually in that gap there, there used to be a jump. Um, there used to be a jump when I was a kid. And, um, and uh, yeah, we'd go out the gate, you'd ride them, the beach is a kilometre away. So you'd just... Back to the beach and... Down to the beach and... Stretch it out there. Yeah. And uh, you'd ride my way back home again, and you'd be on your pony for, you know, an hour and a half or however long it would take. And and was it always the dream to be a national hunt jockey? When you, even you're on the uh, ponies, were you looking at the Grand National? And going, yes, that's what I want to do. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, but I I, I used to love flat racing, obviously, um, because you know just racing in general. But it was more so show jumping. Right. Okay. Um, Marion News, um, Eddie Mackin, yeah. Paul Dara. It was on TV. Yeah, it was on TV. Yeah. Um, all of them things. So as a kid, that would have been more your ambition than... Well, it was just horses. Yeah. You know, whatever it was, whether it was Dublin Horse Show or whether it was the Grand National or whether it was the, the Derby or whatever was on the telly, Dad would bring us to the point of points on a Sunday and Adrian Maguire was riding on a Sunday. Right. And all of a sudden, you know, a couple of years later, here he is riding winners yeah. on the television as a professional. So jockey. that made it real. So that made it real. Yeah, so you can basically touch Adrian Maguire of a Sunday in a point to point. And then watch him on the television. And then watch him on the television yeah. winning, you know, winning on Omerta or... So that's when it becomes a potential career, like... Well, it's or, it's very close. Yeah. It's not that, it's, it's not as far away as, as sitting in the stands watching Ronaldo scoring a goal yeah. or, you know, yeah. it's, that's a long way away, like, you know what I mean? Or sitting at home watching it on television or watching the Premiership or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. And Dad was brilliant, like, Dad, we'd go off to the point of points, we'd land, he'd give you a fiver and he'd say, I'll meet you back in the car. The minute they crossed the line for the last race, right. he says, or I'll be gone. And many a day, he'd be in the queue on the way out the gate and we'd have to run <laughs> down to the car. So you learn fast to get, try and beat him to the car. Because when we were riding point of points then, or when it wasn't, when I was a kid, we used to go out country like so out you know wherever the stand or the bookies or the parade ring was we used to go out to country out further out and try and catch the loose horses right to so that we could ride them back in right okay so that was uh it was always a bonus if you caught a loose horse and rode them back in so you know anything at all i suppose i i worked really really hard on looking like a jockey my first winner was it was 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 pure luck um I went to a point to point, I had a couple of rides uh, for local lads, Sean O'Hearn and different lads. Still had no winner ridden. Was getting a couple of rides, you know, turning up on a Sunday. You might yeah. have one ride, you, there could be spares going, so you might end up with two or three. And uh, so I, I went to Tallow with maybe one or two rides for Sean O'Hearn. And uh, then this horse was going spare. And I had schooled him the week before. And he said, you ride him away there. And he won. Right. And then the next week, I rode another winner. And then kind of... Um, 
the week after that, I rode a winner on the track. Right. And then at the end of the season, I became champion novice rider, under 21 champion. And this is point to point, though. Point to point, right? Yeah. yeah. And it just, it, that was it. And it just never stopped. It just kept going and going and going and going and going. And then I just, I was going out walking a point to point course out the road, you know, the Friday, Thursday or Friday before it was on. I just go out and walk, see what's going on. Yeah. yeah. And it was a local one. So, and, um, I met a man there and he says, oh, I need to talk to you. He says, we need to have a meeting. So um, Adrian McGuire was after retiring and uh, I got the job then in Ferdy's. Right. And that was it then, I turned profession. And had you met Ferdy before or was that? I'd ridden for him as an amateur. Right. Yeah, my first ride in Cheltenham at the festival was for Ferdy. Okay. Yeah. Um, Philly with loads of confidence. So Ferdy was brilliant. Was a great man, great man on his jockeys. Like, you know, he just kept telling me like how how far we were going to go like you know together as they continue now with the three to jump celestial halo the leader by two lengths followed in second place by sublimity donna's palm on the inside solwith is in fourth and then torfishan celestial halo sublimity donna's palm solwith torfishan and barren storm and then one in the dark and only six lengths covering the field as they begin the turn out of the back straight celestial halo sublimity Playing his hand a bit earlier than usual on the outside. Donna's Palm in third, Solwith in four. They're followed by Bahrain Storm, then Trophician, and one of the dark rings up the rear. Running down towards the second last, Celestial Halo being asked to raise his efforts of Limity there on the outside. Solwith making his move on the outer. Donna's Palm just behind them at the second last. And it's of Limity who lands in front from Celestial Halo. Solwith around the outside. Donna's Palm's in four and they're clear of the rest as they round the turn. Sublimity with Solwith coming there on the outside. Donna's Palm into third. Celestial Halo looks beaten. They level up for the final flight now and it's Solwith on the outside. Solwith from Sublimity. Donna's Palm in third. They're clear of Celestial Halo as they race down for the final flight in the Toshiba Irish Champion Earl. Solwith and Dougie Russell from Sublimity at the last. Solwith the leader from Sublimity. Clear of Donna's Palm made a bit of a mistake and then Celestial Halo but Solwith the favourites going to deliver and achieve a fifth grade one win as they race up the line. Solwith powering away. The win is in good style. Donna's Palm might get up for second. He does. Sublimity's third. Celestial Halo for a long way back to one in the dark. And then Bahrain Storm and Torfishan. So Solwith has what it takes yet again and continues his march towards the Smurfer Kappa Champion Hurl at Cheltenham. The 6 5 on favourite wins it and wins it well for Charles Burns, Davy Russell, and the top of the hill syndicate. Everybody talks about home having a certain pull, but like, this place is beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous, yeah. And I actually love it all year round, would you believe? Like, it's, like, we're looking here now, they've put a boardwalk in the whole way, the whole strength, the, the whole length of the beach, and, um, you know, it's busy, like, you know, and I like a busy place, and a place that's been used, yeah. you know, and it's a beautiful place. And I know people, as I said, like, Lily, yeah, Dara that teaches Lily, and her husband was used to shoe my ponies when I was a kid, and I just loved that having them people around, you know, over a long period of time, and you build up friends and relationships and things like that. So it's always nice to have that comfort. Like you, know? you were never tempted to move to me or Kildare for business purposes. No, no way. Yeah, I was, and I did. I did. I lived in Tipperary. Um, I lived in Tipperary for a couple of years, but always with the view to earn enough money to come back and, right. and stay to live here. It is, yeah. I love you all. Um, I love everything about it. Are you starting to think now you, the end is in sight for you? Um, is there a clock on that, I suppose, I'm asking? Well, should people put a clock on it? I, like, I don't have a clock on it because I looked after myself so well um, um, over the years. Um, look, injuries and things will take its toll and, you know, your body just won't be able to take the falls as much as the as he used to, and look, I'm on the back nine, do you know what I mean? So it's easy to kind of say it, to speak in that kind of terms, but at the same time, you know, I've had three or four rides this year, and three rides in the three and finished second, um, and I still just love riding horses. I absolutely adore it. Um, in races though, because like you could, you could ride around just uh, it's, it's, it's the race, the it's adrenaline. The race, yeah. yeah, it's the, trying to figure it out. It's the, it's just I, lo I love 
riding horses in races and I love being a jockey, I, I really do and I'd love to ride for another 10 years but that's not going to be possible, you know, because there's no point in riding unless, well, for me, there's no point in riding unless I'm riding at the very, very top. Well, you've reached the top, so yeah. you couldn't settle now, right? You no, know, um, so the day that I don't ride at the very, very top is the day that that, that it'll, it'll have to stop. For really like That's the motivation to keep going and keep minding your weight and keep minding everything, really. Yeah, I got fat when I broke my neck. To come back from that, because a lot of people have thought that maybe that's a good opportunity to say, right, I've had a great career, I have plans already made for the future, but you decided against that. Yeah, I didn't want a game to finish me. I wanted to finish on my own terms. Um, I didn't want to... Look, I went to the doctor, I asked, can I ride again? And he says, he said, yes, it's, it's very fixable. And then everybody just said that's it for him you know he's finished i know him you know him we all know him he's he's done and dusted and without the help of you know so many people and the goal to get back to ride i don't think i would have fixed i would have mended as well as i as i, as I did it's funny I, I, is it important to you too that your kids get to know you in this phase of your life yeah i love and they to experience that see them i love for them to see me as a jockey Sure, look, I, I don't really know, but I'm sure a lot of uh, other sports people, you know, may not get that opportunity, you know, and I'd love to, I just see a glow in them when they see me riding horses. The clock tires behind us here. You, you managed to bring Tiger Roll down after a grand, a grand national. What was that like? Yeah, it was great. It was it was really special to bring him down here, especially to my hometown, and and uh, to have that connection. And you know, obviously, the public came out to see him. Like it's not much good if you're walking him down, and and <laughs> people are wondering what's he doing here. But like he just, it was it was brilliant. The public came out to see him, and he walked up the whole way up to town. He went up to Green Park, and. It was a beautiful thing. It was just a beautiful thing to, to be able to do, you know. And but most importantly, the people actually came out to see him. A lot gets made whenever sports people bring their kids onto the pitch, or you know, they're in the winners enclosure or wherever. Um, but actually, getting to have your family around you celebrating in the aftermath of a victory like that—that's very special. Yeah, it is because, like, I don't see my kids. You know. When you're in the thick of it, I'm gone before they get up and I'm home and they're in bed. <clears throat> so I don't get to see them that often. And the explanation to why is because I want to win a Grand National. And uh, then they see it afterwards and they kind of, they get as much of a kick out of it as I do. And it kind of it's, I suppose I'm trying to explain to them that these are the fruits of your labour, you know, and this is why I don't get to bring you to school in the morning. Uh, is that trade-off something else that's working away in your head when you're thinking about retirement, that, like, those sacrifices, you've made them and you've, you've reached the top, but at some point it might be nice not to have to make those sacrifices? No, I... Uh, when I was an amateur, I, I thought, when I turn professional, it's just going to be an awful lot easier. You know, I'm going to drive a big car and I'm going to arrive on the races. And you just grow up and you realise this is it. You have to work really, really hard for the rest of your life. And it'll be again when I finish riding. Um, the next step, I'll just have to work as hard to be successful at that. And I just don't want to do something for the sake of doing it. I want to do something to be successful at it. I'm, I'm competitive in anything I do. I, I don't want to be mediocre. I want to be as good as I possibly can be. Well, they, sometimes it's difficult to live in the town that you grew up in and be successful and to, for it to be so seamless I think is um, it probably speaks to your relationship with the town and the people here. Oh yeah sure it's, it's the same same town, same people, the same old story. You know everybody has their, their their daily routines and I know the place and the people know me so nobody it's, it's a great place to be you know to be honest. It's, 
it's just lovely to be around familiar faces and nobody is you up there and nobody is you down there. It's just a constant middle ground there and I'm happy enough with that. Yeah.